pelican with some very soft mangoes and pots are full of skeletons and terry cloth kangos. Hey, what's going on? It's Mango Kango here, and if you clicked on this video, um, you either A, have watched my videos before, or B, uh, you want to learn how to use the build tools or how to rotate objects um, in a more consistent manner, I'd like to say. Or at least some little tips um, as well when it comes to it. So, uh, let's get started with that. So first you're going to want to go into settings, and this is for mobile users too, and turn on tilt furniture and furniture collisions. And what this is going to do is for mobile users, there will be a screenshot at the bottom that includes the um, build tool. But yeah, those will help you with building, especially on mobile. Um, I did hear it's a little buggy, but hopefully it's not that bad. Alright, so as far as PC goes, um, you'll be using T to tilt the object, which means you can flip it um, different directions, and then um, C for collision turn off. Now I'm going to go over why um, there's benefits and why there's not benefits to each of these methods, and I am going to be going over different um, measurements, how you can align stuff up correctly when using this collision or hide mode, um, and stuff like that, even diagonal angles in this video, because I really want it to sum up and be an update video compared to last time's video. Alright, so where do we start? Well, let's start with the simplistics here. So if you clicked on this video, you probably quite literally want to learn how to rotate an object, maybe. So you press R, or if you're on mobile, you click the little um, rotate button on the bottom, and it does something like this. And just a heads up for reference, there are two differences between certain objects in this game. For this object, you can see it's grid locked, which means it is specifically designated to this blocky like grid. Now, if we go over to this object, see how it um, can move a little bit more freely. That's because it is um, more of a free object than it is grid locked. It technically has a smaller grid lock, like a one stud grid lock, but um, regardless, it is definitely smaller than this. So, how do we flip an object on its side? Well, you can use T. Again, I heard it was a little buggy, so... And again, an example of this working would be like this. So it turns it like this, and then I believe if I press R again... Yep, there we go. So what you're going to notice is if you're just pressing T when it's in this state, it's just going to roll over for some objects. And to some, that might seem like it's not doing anything, which I guess it really isn't. But if you press R for rotate, or you press the rotate button, then you get this other option where it tilts upwards and downwards, which is, um, again, a very useful thing. It's very, very cool. Alright, so let's say that doesn't work for whatever reason, or it's buggy, okay? There is a manual way to do this. So you can grab a glass pane and grab your object that you are trying to flip. So let's say it's these tubbles right here, right? If you hover it over the top, especially if, if you're kind of zoomed out at a medium range and press rotate, as you can see, it flips. Now, there is inconsistency with this, um, and there is consistency with it. It's kind of hard to tell sometimes, but let's do the most common thing. Most people are going to use a poster, right, and want it to face downwards or upwards. Well, if you hover it over the top, as you can see, it falls downward. And you just got to kind of find out which way it falls on each side. So as you can see, if I have it rotated this way, it falls downwards. If I have it rotated this way, it falls upwards, which is why I like using this. It's consistent. And now you can place it wherever you'd like. And again, that works with the T key or the tilt tool as well. Just keep that in mind. So now let's talk about collisions. So as you can see, this object is right here. All right. So I have the chair down right now. And if I wanted to place something in here, like this toaster for some reason, if I wanted that like merged into it, then um, you wouldn't be able to because there's collision going on here. But if I press C, it disappears, and I can now place it in here like that, and boom, it shows up just like that. Now, the non-benefit to using the collision tool versus hide mode, in my opinion, is as you could see, it showed up like right away, and you can't use bigger objects like this one. You can't press C, whereas in... Um, Whereas if you wanted to use this tool, I mean, if you want, sorry, if you wanted to have this kitchen in this um, area, you could only do that if you type in the hide mode command. As you can see, if we go in slash show and walk inside, it is collided. 
Again, I wish the collision tool did that, but that's something only hide mode does, which we've been using for quite a while on this channel. Now let's talk about diagonal angles. So for diagonal angles, um, in a previous video I said you could use an item or a briefcase, which still holds true, but it's not very consistent to actually get it um, in the direction at the same time every time, because the briefcase is always going to have a different like area of rotation. So using these two stairs as an example, let's go and grab the record player. So if I wanted to get that diagonal angle, I could place one here and place one here using these blocks to align it to make sure they're both actually equal. Again, I'll get into these like aligning stuff up later, but right now I'm just trying to present the idea that these do create a diagonal angle that is consistent. So you can grab your poster now and place it up against it, and it works similar to um, a roof, I'd say. And just like that, so if I go here, okay, so like this carpet decal, as you can see, it's diagonal. And if we were to do the same thing on this side, and again, you can line this up, which is very useful, and do it all right, just like this. As you can see, they're both the same lengths away from one another and the exact same angle. And that exact same angle is what makes it so important because when you're building, you want consistency, and sometimes you don't want the randomness. Um, if you're doing nature stuff, obviously random can be more, um, like, better. But, uh, in this case, uh, if you're doing a roof, you do want it to be pretty consistent in my knowledge. So again, that's very useful. And these items do attach on just like that. So if you already have the diagonal thing, you can attach on just like that and it will fit just like that for you. So let's talk about how you would do things in hide mode, right? Because hide mode is like kind of tricky because you can't actually see where you're placing stuff. And it can be possibly a little inconsistent at times. So how you would go about this is you'd place a block down or two blocks somewhere because right here this is the center of these two blocks. So if you wanted it to, like let's say, let's think of something that we want to make here. All right, let's say in hide mode I wanted to make a little plant vase, right? So to line it up, I would be using this tool, right? And if it were on a table or a certain height's length that you want, you can always move up and down the stair. I hope that makes sense, like, um, let me try to refer to a table real quick for you guys. So yeah, so this table right here sits at about this level of the stair. So when you're placing your other object that you want to get lined up over there, like let's say it's this teapot, then you want it to sit at that level. You see that right there? That would be the correct level. Now obviously we're not like actually trying to get this on that table, so we'll just place it on the ground. So um, again, line it up like this, and then you can go in hide mode. And since we have one here, you gotta remember that you had it like this, so we're just going to rotate it the opposite and go in hide mode again. And all you're doing is stacking objects in this area. And um, now you gotta place your plant down to finish it off. And what makes this so useful is if you were in hide mode, you'd be like, well, where do I place it, right? Because you don't know where you placed it. There's no markers, there's no grid, there's no anything to help with that, which I think could be a, would be a really cool update in the future. So we don't place it here, we don't place it here. We remember that we place it here. And this follows um, any area that you want to place it. If you wanted to place it here, it would work there too. We just know that we got to place it here. And now we can go and slash show. And all slash show does is reloads your house. And as you can see, and as you can see, it's in here for you. And I actually made a little mistake here. I placed both of the garbages um, <laughs> going the same direction. Now that's a common mistake. People do that all the time. So maybe it's a good thing I showed an example of that. So I just deleted the other trash bin. We're going to have it facing this way now, which should be the correct way. And as you can see, now we have a little potted plant and we can delete everything around it. And just like that, you have an object that you want to make. That's how you kind of go about lining stuff up in this game. So my problem with the whole collision thing that he added to the game is that if I wanted to line this up and pressed C, it disappears, which means I can't rebound this off of the stair to get like different heights. Um, I can't see anything, so I don't actually know where I'm placing this. Like, I actually forgot where the stair is. I'm going to do my best guess. Oh, it's not facing against it. And it's not even in the right spot. So, again, it's kind of not very useful in that retrospect, but it, or aspect. 
but it's whatever. Again, if you go in hide mode, it's vastly easier in my opinion because now I can use the stair to consistently get different height alignments. Um, and yeah, it's just, I think it's a lot, hide mode's still superior, which is a little unfortunate because I was hoping that the collision tool would be very useful, but it is what it is, right? All right, so let's say another scenario, an object happens to be like you need to get it um, on an area that you can't um, always get it to. So let me show an example of what I mean by that, first of all. All right, so let's say for whatever reason that um, you want another plant in, in this bush. So I want this plant, right? But I want it to be um, tilted this way, right? But it's going to be inside this plant and if i use the stair well it sits a little too far and i want it to be over here but i want it down one so the stair doesn't really work does that make sense like i can't push this into that stair block so the height doesn't really work out so how would you do that well we can always go in hide mode and place what i call a rebound system <laughs> it's a little complex i make it sound overly complex but <laughs> getting candy um, you would use this sign, okay, which you can always press done on, and now you have this little rebound area, which it can rebound off of, and I'm actually going to be using a different uh, block here, so now I know where the center is, just um, to kind of inform myself. Again, with one stud objects, you can't really get like an exact center, but you can get in within this two stud area. But for to show you what I mean by this, okay, so now we can get this where we want it, right? Because it's sitting at a height that it couldn't sit at if we were using like a stair tool. It just wouldn't work, right? Um, now maybe if I had the stair going this way, it would work, but I'm trying to like explain that there are different scenarios for everything. So this rebound tool does work. So if I go like that, I can delete this sign because now it's sitting one stud away from the um, or one grid point away from the stair and let's go in slash show mode to see how this looks so I don't think it's gonna look very good yeah it looks okay again this is sticking out too much but to express the idea that maybe I had at one point maybe this is sitting against a wall so maybe you wouldn't see that very often again it's all about the idea and getting it in the right spot and this technically is kind of the right spot and we can like color match this and everything. It looks kind of cool actually, it's not that bad. Could have been a little bit worse, right? But we got it where we want it and that's kind of how the rebound system works. All right, and then I have this dojo shelf here which has this little bit sticking out. Now this is how you do half pixel alignments. Now this is if you're like super technical and something just doesn't feel centered for you. Um, you can do something like this. So let me show you what I mean by that. All right, I just put it up one so I can express this a little bit better. But this plant, so let's say the plant obviously can go on top here, it can go here. But what you might not know is that if I have it like this, it sticks out that little tiny bit, which is like less than a stud's length away. And you could technically do like multiple little tiny um, pixels, is what I'm going to call them, of movement rather than the entire stud's length, which is very interesting. I think some people might find interest in that. Alright, and that kind of sums up this video. I hope you guys did learn something, obviously, from it. Um, I hope that it kind of clarifies some things that maybe weren't said in the old video, because uh, the old video is a little outdated now, especially too. And um, I just wanted to update it, because I felt like there was a lot that changed. And again, remember, everything has different collisions, its own collisions. Um, everything has its own unique attributes. Some things rotate things differently, some have different angles, and you can use that to your advantage. Just remember that. So hopefully we can get see some uh, more houses using these tools now that the stuff is actually implemented in the game. But yeah, hope you guys enjoyed. Have a good one. Uh -huh. Uh -huh.